Okay. Vicky, uh, like us. Yes, please like and subscribe. Simon. Simon must be feeling like, yeah, that guy's gotten beat down. I mean, he, I mean, I take some hits. James takes some hits. Ben takes some hits. But Simon takes more shelling on Twitter and YouTube and, and all the social media and more than I've seen anybody else take. And he's just like, man, eh, whatever. If you're going to be on board or not. It's just, it's just uh, kind of a way to do things. Kind of rolls off his back. It's pretty interesting. Uh, James says, uh, no way that SPF kid created a slightly positive image of the media. I got to agree. Maybe he didn't. Maybe it was all a ruse. Maybe it was all created, stage and such. Who knows? Maybe behind closed doors, SPF's a power lifter and the fights in the UFC. I don't know. Wrench Mafia. Yeah, I've got a lot of wrenches here and they help me out. I want to say thanks to all the admins who do their, do great work by keeping all the spammers and the scammers out to protect you guys. So you guys are my first line, first and last line of defense. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Exactly. Thanks. Thanks, Rob, to you and moms. Mm. Yeah, like this is, this is the argument. And, and EJ Moe's got a point. Regulation didn't prevent Lehman Brothers respectfully. You, you're right. You're exactly right. But it comes down to this. Like, why do we even have, why do we even have speed zones and stop signs? I mean, don't people get in accidents every day? So what the hell's the point of it? Just get rid of them all. Just Autobahn everywhere, right? School zone, 90. Whew, off you go. I just think uh, that, yes, didn't stop Lehman Brothers. Yes, there's other uh, different bank uh, collapses. And yes, these things don't happen. But we try to do the best we can possibly do. And I'm just, uh, I, I just think that, that some of these crypto exchanges, they've gotten, all, they've gotten fat off us for far too long. I think it's time to organize and uh, have our voices heard, hopefully in Washington. So that's it. Uh, <laughs> Brother Joe, you think it's worth it to, to still hold Solana for a couple of years for recovery? Not asking for financial advice. That's good because I can't give it. Not a financial analyst or financial advisor. I can just say this. If you believe in, in Solana and the team behind it and the mission that they have, and you believe that this is the crypto for you, then you should heavily consider sticking around. However, for other people who are like, I don't like where things are going with Solana. I don't like this process. Maybe it's time to give it up. That's all I can tell you. Have you watched on Twitter the video from Hoskins and talking about FTX industry? I've watched a, I don't know if I watched the whole thing, but uh, I, I did see the, the tweet from, from Charles on the bankless guys. Boy, he hates those guys with a passion. Probably because they call Cardano a scam every chance they get. <laughs> so I, don't, I can see why he does hate them, but it is kind of funny. Uh, but to answer your question, I watched a snippet of it and uh, you know he's pretty much saying, I think the kind of the same thing I'm talking about. Not to, the, to this point though. Yeah. When you lost, hey, Majarki, when you lost more than Mr. Wonderful in an investment, you feel powerful. Yeah. Again, Kevin O'Leary, we did a video about this yesterday. You can check it out. It's in the, it's on the channel. But it's funny because Kevin goes, well, this is the bottom. This is the, this is the bottom. And, 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 and of course, institutions are not going to put any more money into it. Until we get regulation, he was really harsh when he when he said that. Like, but I'm like, come on, come on, man. This may be this may be the bottom. I don't think it's the bottom uh, for for the market. I don't think it's the bottom for sentiment. We thought that was, that happened in June, remember? And everyone's like, this is the bottom. This, this is the bottom, and the sentiment is the bottom. We're at extreme fear. Trust me, trust me. When the next couple of exchanges collapse, you'll see more fear. You'll see more problems. I'm not happy about that, although I look happy. But the but, but the reality is, is this, is that when that happens, I prepared for that. I did not go all in too heavy, like we always talk about. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose, right? I am waiting for a bigger collapse. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. Because if you haven't noticed, I'm not super smart. I'm just smart enough to figure out that maybe I should put a little bit of money into this crypto space and do that over years. And that's called DCA. And I just, and nowadays I'm not for sure how bad it's going to get. So I do what's called micro DCA, which is 
uh, I, I spend a considerably less, maybe 20% of my original allocation uh, to dollar cost average every week and every month, or sorry, every day and every week. So I just kind of hedge my bet. I'm never going to time it right. I can't do that. I can't time the bottoms and I can't time the tops, but I can get close and I'll be happy with that. And I try to invest in, in the uh, products that I think do well. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Avalanche, Near, Polkadot. And I do still have some Solana, although I have uh, shelved that for right now. So, but uh, I like some other ones. The one, or first ones I, I mentioned. Time to, time to dumb Solana and their dumb sneakers. Maybe. Well, that's uh, that's Steppen, which I think is built on Solana. I still have that uh, NFT. I just bought it just to see how it worked. I hated it. I know some people love it. That's why I talk about Sweatcoin all the time. And to be transparent, I'm super biased on Sweatcoin. Actually, everything I talk about, I'm super biased because you know why? I own it. So I don't think that's a that's a, an, an epiphany that people are like, wow, Rob must own a bunch of these cryptos. I do. And I'm super biased about it. <laughs> that's it. And all of, they're not all going to work out. Some are going to collapse, and I'm okay with that. Uh, Dougie, that's a good question. <clears throat> is there a way to set up a safe wallet on an iPhone? Just got one, but don't have a PC that is trustworthy. So, Dougie, what I do is uh, I have a MetaMask wallet. That's not really safe because it's it's a hot wallet. And everything that's, that's connected to the Internet is not near as safe as a cold storage device. And cold storage means it's not connected to... Uh, the internet whatsoever. So like my ledger go. Anybody see my ledger? No, I'm just kidding. It's inside. So well, the couple of ledgers that I have, I mean, they're just they're they're not tethered to the internet. So I can use those. But as far as like a safe wall on an iPhone, I don't really like any of those types of things. Now you can have uh, I think your your ledger live app, you can have that on your phone and just kind of like take a look at what you uh, what you own and things like that but you still need your, your cold storage ledger device to, to send any crypto out. I think that's, that's the big thing. It would be cool to have like a, like a card. There's like this metal card. I forgot what it was, but something that you can do with that. I don't have it because I don't trust anything. YouTube won't deal with scamming. That is true. Ben says, don't invest in anything you can't afford to lose is not practical to some people. That is potentially correct. And, and for those people who are living not just paycheck to paycheck, but can't afford stamps, can't afford food, it'd be tough for me to say to invest. Again, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. So, oh, yeah. This is what I was talking about, Trick. When you think about 40 million transfer from, from crypto.com, the timing couldn't be worse. Banks do this all the time. Lucky in crypto, there is the chain. So, uh, CZ Binance came out and he said, we need uh, transparency of chains. We need a, uh, they call it a, a Merkle tree. And that was the ability for everybody to take a look and see what, how much crypto that they have on chain. I thought that was a good start, but you understand that's just half of the equation, right? That's like if you just took at uh, your profits and liability sheets, your P&L sheets, and all they, all they showed you, like, here's our profits. Okay, well, uh, what's your overhead? Uh, how many loans do you have out? How much collateral do you have out? How much is here and how much is over there? So like, like to me, I'm like, that's a good start. But in all honesty, you know, uh, couldn't you just start shuffling things around like crypto.com is doing? Because what they're doing essentially is just moving things back and forth. I don't think it's an accident whatsoever. Maybe crypto.com is, and that's why I say, like, if you think there's some, some shenanigans up, take all your, your crypto off. Why do you have it there? The exchange did their job, didn't they? They exchanged your fiat on-ramp for crypto, and they gave you crypto. Now it's your job to take it off. You don't owe them anything. You don't owe them squat. They work for you, not the other way around. So in all honesty, just take it off. And what I really need to do is, if this, if you're a little confused about the ledger and how that all works, don't worry. So was I. So were, so were every single person in this video right now. Every single person was like, I don't get it. I got it. Because it's a little bit like, it's a, it's a different way of seeing things. You essentially are going to be your own bank. And that is a great responsibility. 
you're not going to have anybody in the middle. You're not going to have to ask anybody for permission. You're not going to have these exorbitant fees. You are your own bank and you can do that right now and you can hold and cold storage all the crypto that you want to. The problem is how you do that. And that, my friend, is very easy. There's this great website. It's called Dan Teaches Crypto and it's 100% free. And it's going to be, it's free and it's always will be free. And I set it up because not everybody can afford five dollars ten dollars fifty bucks a hundred bucks a month so i made it free and it's all the best thing that i all the best information i can possibly do and what i did let me log in let me put in my password one two three four five same as my luggage just kidding every time i do that everybody's like you shouldn't give away your password bro so i always got to preface that well i'm just kidding so here's the modules i got six the basic safety investing reviews how do i how do i stake cryptos how do i use the metamask wall how do i update the firmware and then the metaverse part and then for safety i put these videos out that are very bite-sized ish pieces what's a crypto wallet this is seven minutes what's a public private key this is five minutes how to set up your nano ledger. This is eight minutes. How do you set up the app? This is six minutes. How do you transfer crypto from exchange to wallet? This is a whopping four minutes and 30 seconds. How do you delete and restore a nano ledger? Which I had to do because I left one of my ledgers here in Puerto Rico when we went to go vacation in Texas. And uh, yeah, that's what we do. And uh, I like, shoot. Well, good thing I have my stone book with me or my, port my little booklet that I keep all my mnemonic phrases in. I just ordered another ledger. And voila, six figures I have access, back back access to. And I show you how to do that. How do you transfer crypto from assets to And then how to update your firmware. So it's very simple. I, I make it as simple as I possibly could, can, and they're very short. So if this confuses you, uh, there's your option. And it's free. So there's no excuse anymore. Just saying. All right. Spike fun. Spike and spike can spike can four of the top six cryptos are all stable coins, almost 200 billion market cap between the four of them. That's what Ben talks about. Ben from into the cryptoverse, he's like, you know, if you, if you take away the stable coins, <laughs> Bitcoin dominance is going up. I'm like, eh. Ben wants that Bitcoin dominance up badly. I can't blame him because once that goes up, then we start to see more of a rally in the other direction as far as like to the bull, the bull runnish. JH, great comment. Can we do a contest to give away a few ledgers? Yes. I will put that on my list of things to do. Let's start giving away some ledgers. I'll reach out to those guys and see. We had a little tiff not too long ago, me and Ledger. We got a little ticked off at them, uh, but that, that's on me. So now I will uh, grovel and go to them and say, please, sir, can I have some more? And get a couple of ledgers and we'll start to give them away. Also, if you're looking for um, a link to buy a ledger, there's a link in the description. And also to write down your passwords and mnemonic phrases, Use a, use a stone book. Don't be like stupid like me and write it on a piece of paper or a little pad that I lost. And uh, in the early days, I lost 20,000 Cardano. You know how much that was at the peak? It was $60,000. Gone because I lost my mnemonic phrase. So I always like to say, you know, use a uh, what's called a shield folio or a stone book. And uh, they look like this. And they work out pretty well. They're uh, smear resistant, water resistant. And uh, you can also write in there in LED and, or black light. And it uh, works out for me. It's very, not too expensive. There's a link in the description at you get 20% off. Again, that's something that uh, I use all the time. All right. Wrench is a mod. All right. Yeah, the great. That's a good, that's a good, a good handle. The great. I really hope people are listening to the rules you follow. The moment I've seen SBF tweet, everything is fine. I think see here. I took all my stuff from FTX. <laughs> we did the video the next day, remember? And we were talking about like, isn't it amazing how every CEO it says the same thing? It's like that, it's like that scene in uh, Naked Gun with Leslie Nielsen, and everything's blowing up behind him. He's like, nothing to see here, folks. Move along, citizens. And in the background, everything is just impl imploding. And Sam did that. And it was pretty, pretty telling. So, yeah, I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, next question. Strategy for real estate in the next five years. Seems prices are coming down. Yes. Rates going up. Oh, no. 
Are you a cash buyer or would you wait for rates to come back down? So right now, I mean, we're cash buyers. That's what we bought this house in Puerto Rico because it's impossible, it seems like, to get a, a mortgage loan here. But um, now we're waiting for it to go down more and it will go down more. The problem is, is that it will go up. So you have two options here. If you're a cash buyer, this is a perfect opportunity, right? Because as the prices go down, you, ha you pick up some real gems. And the same thing happened with our friends in uh, 2007 and 8 and 9. They just wait on the sidelines. They sold in 2006 and five, wait on the sidelines, scooped up houses for pennies on the dollar in 2008 and nine, and uh, just went forward. The other, of course, that they were cash buyers. Now let's say that you need a loan. Things that you can do, of course, this is not financial advice. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is. So yeah. Well, I can tell you that, you know, there's a thing called refinancing. So just think about that. Okay. Charles Oxen says, we are looking at a world where non-custodial wallets are no longer going to be permitted in the USA due to circulation. That happens at the end of the crypto. Charles really goes for it when he's talking about regulation and the things that, are, that could potentially happen. He sees the absolute worst, worst, worst case scenario. And uh, so far, he hasn't been right. But if he is right on this, then, he's, then that's what happens. Crypto does go away. Crypto in its, in its form right now will not be anything. Remember what I told you about, uh, hey, you can be your own bank? Well, if they take away non-custodial wallets, ledgers, tracers, those type of things, even MetaMask, which, debatable, there goes crypto. And it won't make a difference. Because what's the point? You know, then it's just like, well, I got to numbers go up and that's cool. What does that do? You still got a middleman now. You got the government. And of course, to transfer and do things and fees, of course, the banks pick it up and go, you're too stupid to understand. Let us do it for you. And people will believe them. But you're not. Everybody's smart enough to do this. I'm an idiot and I can do it. All right. So Roger says, did Sam get arrested trying to uh, flee to Dubai? And there's a lot of different stories going on. I reported on it yesterday, but it looks like he is being uh, observed in the uh, uh, island that he's at in the Bahamas. So I don't think, I don't, stories will come out and who knows if he's there or not. But uh, if he does flee to Dubai, maybe you can say I had the three AC guys, but they would probably kill each other. Because as I understand it, the three AC collapse and Do Kwan and everything else is all, I don't know if I believe all of it. it they say it's all related to, to FTX and, and Sam Bankman. And I got to tell you, wouldn't this be a perfect time to pin the tail on the donkey and just say, it's all his fault. It's all that guy. He did it. It wasn't us. We were good. We were good. But he did some shenanigans and he screwed us. I don't believe, I don't believe the narrative all the way for a second. And you got to remember is that don't make saints out of sinners. Everybody had their hand in this. Some people did some shady stuff and nobody's innocent. So if you're going to tell me that, oh, you know, three ACs were just, just the good guys and Do Kwan was, he was a very humble person and Celsius was okay and Voyager didn't give, forget that, forget that. They're all guilty. Sorry. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> did your friend already started to ask was at the bottom? Yeah, I had some. I had some friends ask me, "Hey, was that it?" I'm like, "I don't think it is." Let's see. Yeah, when the S and P plan is thirty percent, thirty two hundred. Uh, the S and P is doing pretty good, as I understand it. But right now, they could plunge again. The great says, "Rob, your camera is shaky. Today. I don't even like the table. No, it's like I keep shaking. It's attached to this this um, uh, riser desk." And when I get all jumpy, then it starts to, you know, when I start to shake and get excited and, and pound the desk, then it starts to shake. So sorry. If you have motion sickness, you should take Benadryl before you watch my show when I'm all ticked off. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Julie's got a good point. So soul pumps so much because of SBF and other VCs. Makes me doubt that it'll pump again so hard ever again. I, I don't know because... <clears throat> I, first of all, I don't use Cardano, but a friend of mine, Steven, who owns uh, Smokehouse Grill here in Puerto Rico, he does a lot of DeFi plays, and he says, have you ever used Solana? I'm like, ah, not really. He says, it's super fast, and it's super cheap, 
He goes, when it's up. And we have both laughed. But uh, it's true. You know, it is fast and cheap. I don't know if it can uh, handle the onboarding, but just remember that. So, but again, do you like the direction that's going? Do you like the things that it's doing? Do you like the fact that, uh, you know, Solana can just come out and be like, okay, take that Nintendo cartridge out and blow on it and put it back in and reset everything. To me, I'm like, I don't think that's really decentralized. But that's just, that could be just me. Some people don't care. If people cared about what decentralized was, Binance Coin is the most centralized project out there. I think it's in the top five still. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Fitness coins are really, how do I say this? Say it, say it's a scam because that's what everybody calls it. You know, and here's the thing about Sweatcoin. Remember, you know, I have to, first of all, do you know how YouTube gets paid? Ads. Did you see an ad? Well, no, Rob, because I have a blocker and I'm premium. Okay, fine. But the majority of people, uh, that's how YouTube makes its money. It's ads. So with Sweatcoin, they just want your eyeballs, right? They want your eyeballs wherever the app is at, right? So you download the Sweatcoin app and you walk 10,000 steps. Hurrah. And then you get roughly, I think it's like eight now, eight sweat coins. And you go on the app and you can buy goofy little things. But you're going to see ads there. You're going to see ads. That's how it is. And then the, the, the next part will say, well, people will say, well, if they're doing that, then you know who the product is. The product is you. So I talked to Oleg about that. We did a deep dive. Look at Dan Degen, my second channel, which is the most risky projects that you can get into. Expect to lose all your money if you want. And uh, we talked about this and he said, no, we don't. He goes, in our terms and conditions, we do not sell your, your data. As we progress, you're going to be able to sell your data. And that's where, and who do you sell that to? Well, maybe your insurance company would like to know that. Uh, maybe your uh, life insurance or health insurance. Uh, maybe your car insurance. Maybe somebody wants to know in, in, your, in your employer to give you a discount rate on whatever. I don't know. But there's a reason why data is so important. There's a reason why Facebook was a trillion dollar company. It's because they took your data and they sold it to advertisers. I'm still waiting for my check, matter of fact. I'm not gonna get that. So that's their plan, but you're right. I get you, so. <laughs> Will says, we do need regulation, especially to save the tourists. It's true. And that's just it, like, like we don't need it. If you're here watching this video, you're already a pro. I mean, mostly, you're not a you're not a tourist if you're here in the bear market watching me on a Sunday, when you could be drinking and eating brisket and watching football. So, uh, I think the regulation that comes in it has to save your grandma and it has to save the people who don't understand and it has to save your idiot brother who seems to never understand what you're talking about, me and Beardy. So yeah, so this is what it is. For us, we're still gonna use the, the cold storage devices and hopefully people can go to channels like this and figure it out. There's lots of channels that get it right. That's it. Ah, Corey says, I use Trustwall on my iPhone, which is great. There you go. I don't use Trustwall, but I'll have to check it out. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. We should do some giveaways to track my people's channel. Nah, I'm fine right now. I don't like new people. You know why? So I got to deal with the, most, the dumbest comments. That's all. That's all I heard. And like, I, I'm always on this rant. Like when I when we had the bull market, I just hear the people like, "Rob, you're a boomer." Not. And you don't understand because this shark coin is going to a million, and you just don't know what you're talking about. And you have shell shock and PTSD from 2017. All right, I get it. I like the I like you guys who get it and you understand, and we can all be on the same page when we can move forward. So. But I will take a look at Ledger and, and see if we can get some free ones. I think that'd be cool. I can definitely get that the the Shield folios. I can do a bunch of giveaways on that if that's what you guys would like. No problems. Yeah, where is one mullet? You know where one mullet is? Probably playing golf. Unless he's stuck in Chicago. Rob, outside of Bitcoin, what three dwarf projects are you most bullish on for the next bull run? I don't know. Products that have a greater great leadership and are here for the long run. I mean, I like Sweatcoin. Biased. You also have to take a look at. Uh, <clears throat> there was a comment. I forgot who it was. It wasn't Tim Draper. It was somebody who, 
who was a, a very huge investor, uh, and it wasn't Peter Thiel, it was somebody in, the, in, that, in that range, where they talked about how every great startup is a cult. Just wait for it. Every great startup is a cult. And he says, you know, you can see that uh, with, you know, Peloton was a little bit of a cultish thing. You can see that with uh, iPhone or with Apple and their products. And uh, you can see that a little bit uh, with my favorite, which is CrossFit. That is like almost, it's not, I know people are going to say, Rob, a real cult is when you, I get it, but you know what I mean? Cultish like behavior. So, you know, Mike Novogratz called Cardano a cult and he didn't understand it. Well, that's what makes things great. So look, I like Cardano. I'm not going to be ashamed to say that. I mean, they got a couple of great uh, projects going on. They got Meld, a world mobile token, which again is bringing connectivity. And I want to remind you, has, uh, is, let me show you. How much are they doing right now? Hold. I don't know if I can find it. That's not it. Where they're already active in, in different parts of Africa, and they're actually already giving phone services and telecommunications to the people on the ground right now with their aerostats, air nodes, and using Cardano as the financial backbone and structure. So I'm like, wow, I think it's actually doing something. It actually has real world utility. And I think it's over one gigabyte, or I don't know how many gigabytes are actually uh, pulled out already. So that one, Bitcoin, I know people don't like Ethereum that much, but everybody builds on it. So probably do pretty well until something, until they figure out sharding or whatever they want to do. And I think you got to, I always take a look at, uh, you know, there's the PayPal mafia, you know, Elon Musk and Peter Thiel and those guys. Uh, I always take a look at the Ethereum Mafia, people that built Ethereum that kind of branched off. One of those, Dr. Gavin Wood from Polkadot. Charles and Cardano, a couple others out there. Um, so I like those because I've already done things like that so I can see it. And then uh, Avalanche could do quite well. Sonic could still do quite well. I don't know if it's going to be, I mean, after this, it takes this hit. But like I said, friend uh, Steven seems to think it's awesome and works out in DeFi projects. Cosmos could be big. And uh, like a lot of layer zeros, layer ones. And of course, the I think one thing we always forget about is Chainlink for some reason. But are there any more oracles that people that take outside data, like real world data, and is able to pull it into the blockchain? Besides Charlie, which is on Cardano. But Chainlink will probably do pretty well. And of course, having said that, I'm sure Chainlink just went down 20%. So whatever. All right. Yeah, Del Boy says people kept their crypto on exchanges because of interest. I did the same thing myself, right? I did on Celsius, I did on Voyager. Huge mistake. Huge, right? And then, of course, when I figured it all out, Celsius I figured out a little bit. It was on the cusp. The same day that I did the video was the same day they shut down withdrawals. It was only like a 10-hour difference. Voyager I caught two weeks early. I mean, once I figured out 640 million to three hours capital, uncollateralized. I was like, <laughs> I'm taking it all off. Even though I did leave my Voyager token tokens on there, which are worthless anyhow now, so whatever. I should have sold them out at that point, but I didn't. And then of course with FTX, I used FTX in the past, but I had learned my lesson already a long time ago. So it was already on my, my ledger. You know what I should do is just every Friday, we should just do, or every Thursday or Saturday or something, we should just do one of, just a video of me showing you me taking my crypto off of Coinbase every single Thursday. That way people are like, oh, it's that time to, of the week, at least. Yeah. Arculus, that's the one, the, the metal device for cold storage. I don't really know how it works. Probably should reach out to those guys. Hi, <laughs> I am becoming a bank. I'm Ron Burgundy, yes. Yeah, Ben. Oh, I see what you're saying, Ben. Uh, what I mean is that risk has to be taken in order to get ahead. It does, but there's some people that really can't afford anything, anything, anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it depends on where you're from, right? 
if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you can't put food on the table, don't invest in Bitcoin. Jeez. But if you could put in five bucks, you know, maybe that would be, I can't tell you. Uh, Martin says, can Ledger store any kind of crypto? Not everything, but it sure can store a hell of a lot of it. And not only that, but like, like here's an example, like near protocol, like it's not stored in Ledger. You need a third party uh, wallet, which would be the near wallet but you can only unlock it, send and receive if you have your ledger uh, connected each time you want to do those things. So uh, it does a lot. I mean, everything as far as Ethereum and ERC-20, almost everything it has in there. And that's a lot of it. That's like, you know, over 50% of all cryptos out there anyhow. Just correct me in the comment section. Oh, shoot. Guys, it's been an hour and six minutes. Uh, so one more. Banned protocol. Pat says banned protocol. Yeah, that's another Oracle. I don't know how it's doing. And that's it. And then last one, Steph, Stephan A says near will be dead. Potentially. Remember, we talked about contagion, near, Solana, some other different projects. They're heavily invested in by uh, Alameda Research. So who knows? But that's what's happening today. So look, everybody, thanks for stopping by on a Sunday and sticking with me for an hour. Crazy. Uh, if you're like me, get out there and go outside. Your portfolio is not moving. And if it does move, it'll probably be down. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Like today's video, thumbs up. So subscribe, all that good stuff. But uh, I'll see you on, on uh, tomorrow. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much. Adios.